Well, the day's finally here. This evening I'll travel up to Folkestone to get on the, the Euro Tunnel and travel to France carp fishing. Um, haven't done it for quite a few years. Uh, because I've adopted the traditional angler's approach, uh, I didn't think uh, carp fishing in France would be for me anymore. I always associated it with sat behind rods for a week, spotting and spawning baits out at range and, uh, and waiting for a big fish to slip up. Um, but uh, obviously not the case, there's a, there's a fishery called the Sanctuary near Bourges, uh, which is about five or six hours into France, um, owned by my friend Adam Entwistle. Uh, Adam is a friend, a good friend of mine, although we've never even met, we've spoke online a lot, practically every day, uh, and he did all the illustrations in my book. So I'm looking forward to going out and meeting him. But he's got a, he's got a fishery out there which is beautiful. It does, it's, it's not about big fish out there. There are big fish, there are carp over 50 pounds and there are grass carp to 53 pounds in there along with other species, including a lot of roach over two pounds, which would be nice to, uh, to get amongst. But uh, it's more about the surroundings there. It's just a beautiful place. I've seen pictures of it. I've seen short videos of it as well and it just looks amazing. So to spend seven days there just for some R&R &R more than anything would be lovely. Um, to catch something a bit big on the split cane and the centre bin reel maybe or the, or an old Mitchell would be really good um, see if I can capture it on video as well and show you guys afterwards so so yeah I'm, I'm setting off at 8 o'clock this evening uh, the plan is to get down to Folkestone by about half 10 perhaps uh, the train isn't until 3.20 in the morning but my idea is to park up near Folkestone get a couple of hours sleep in the car so that I'm kind of refreshed and I'm travelling through the night without being extra tired um, like I said, I've got about a five or six hour journey, perhaps more towards six hours once I get the other side. It's, it's Paris and then the same distance again. So uh, it's quite, quite a drive on the other side of the road. So I've got to have my wits about me. So today's been a busy day. I worked until 12 o'clock, uh, then went straight to Shoreline Baits and picked up some, uh, some sausage or boilies. Um, they're the baits I use everywhere I go. Um, doesn't matter where I go. My friend Tony put me on them uh, a good few years ago now, and I've never looked back. It's one of those baits that I've always done well on, I've always caught on. Um, wherever I've gone, new venues, Redmire, France, wherever it is that the bait does well, carp just seem to enjoy eating it. So um, it's nice to take that with you wherever you go and know that the carp are going to enjoy eating it. You don't have to worry about whether they're on the bait or not, you just have to worry about putting it in the right place. So that's always a bonus, um, and you're fishing with confidence. Um, then I popped into Manning's Fish and Tackle Shop, which is, is the, my local shop, um, pick up a few last minute bits. Um, and so the rest of the afternoon now is going to be about popping to the supermarket to get some stuff, some euros for the tolls, um, making sure I've got everything, double checking lists, passports, tickets, all, all the usual stuff. Fit the headlight reflectors to the car, deflectors, whatever they are. Um, and, and away we go. So I'll probably have a chat with you again um, once I get to Folkestone perhaps, uh, maybe even when I'm on the train. So uh, over and out. So now I've got to get all that in there. Job done. So yeah, quite tired. We've just arrived at Folkestone. Um, I'm parked up in a big car park um, and there's a big terminal behind me with a Burger King sign and stuff. So I can only think it's like a big service station. Um, never been here before, so I don't know the drill, but they've given me a, a ticket to put in the uh, uh, rear view mirror. Um, and they've allowed me uh, to get on the train an hour earlier. So I'm on at 2.20 now, not 3.20. It just means I can, I can drive a little bit safer, a little bit slower uh, and take it easy driving through France because it is a bit weird with all the roundabouts and, and drivers on the wrong side of the road and stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm a bit tired. So uh, I'm gonna go and grab a coffee uh, and you know, stretch my legs for a bit uh, and then probably try and get an hour's kip in the car. Um, so next time I chat with you will probably be on the train. Um, wicked. Well this is surreal. Um, I'm actually sat in my car on the train. 
Um, I knew it was the case, but until you actually do it, you don't quite fathom it out. You know, it's um, it's a bit of a weird concept. Um, but having been on the train now, uh, 35 minutes across to the other side, and then you're driving straight out. I don't know why anyone would take the boat now. Perhaps more for the social thing than anything else, or maybe for the big coaches that actually can't get on the train. Um, but this is obviously the way to go. Uh, it's one o'clock now, absolutely bang on one o'clock, uh, and this leaves at 20 past one. So we can, well, uh, there was about three cars in front of me, so I'm right at the very front of the train, and it's probably going to take 20 minutes to fill it up with the rest of the cars. Um, so 20 minutes till we go, and then 35 minutes to get across so in the next hour I'll be in France and then I'll be on the way for the next leg of the journey. Um, chances are I'm going to turn up early, um, travelling early hours of the morning, there's not going to be much traffic on the roads so it's going to be quite plain sailing hopefully. Um, and if I turn up early I can have a kip in the car or perhaps pop down to the supermarket and get some food for the trip. Uh, I'm starting to feel quite tired now um, so I might have half an hour's sleep if I can, set my alarm so that I'll wake up just before we get to France uh, and I'll have a chat with you next time I get a chance. Afternoon. Well, so I'm here. I'm all set up. Um, the bivvy's set up. The rods are set up. Um, I'm fishing peg one, uh, which is quite a short chuck to the far bank. And there's three lovely looking spots over there, which I've got marked up. So um, I've been round and I've baited them up. I've put quite a bit of bait on each spot because um, it looks as though the wind's blowing down the other end of the lake. Um, so if anything, I want to put some bait there and try and draw them up back up this way. Um, that's the plan. So um, what I'm going to do right now, it's about quarter to six. Um, I'm not going to put the rods out until later. I'm going to just leave them settle now. Um, I've been told that the boat time seems to be first thing in the morning. Um, so if I can get them out last thing um, and then it'd be nice and still for the morning. There's plenty of bait out there, so I might better get a morning take. But what I'm going to do now um, is I've got a couple of tins of sweet corn and a, and a tin of lunch of meat. I'm going to take up um, to the other lake and I'm going to have a little stalk around the edge. Walked up there earlier and I saw a couple of little bow waves uh, right close to the bank so if I can creep up on them I might be able to present a bait uh, and nick a fish early on so um, that's the plan. Um, the, I just, I'm not one for showing rigs I think it's quite a boring bit of videos actually everyone shows you their rig um, and everyone's got a different take on it so I don't think you actually get anything from it personally I think it's a personal thing to you rigs um, but just for those who might wonder what I do use, um, that's the sort of thing that I use. 
two sausage oil bottom baits. Um, fairly long hair, I like it to go in so it, it can dangle around and it pulls that hook point around I think. Um, a number four angling iron wide gate, really strong, you can angle dead cheap off of these things. Um, really sharp too, fantastic, a fantastic hook. A uh, little fox kicker and a little bit stripped back so there's a bit of movement inside the fish's mouth so that couldn't be any simpler really. I've got, I'm going to put one of them on each rod, um, nice and close to the far bank and uh, hopefully that'll do the business. I can chop and change through the week, we can see how it goes, but that's uh, that's what I've got confidence in and I think that's what that's what will work. So I'm going to go for a wander now, go for a little stalk and see what we can come up with. It's early evening now. Um, I've got the rods out for the night now. They're all set, all three of them. Um, I had a little fish for the roach earlier with some sweet corn on a float, but I didn't get anything at all. Um, there's a small shoal of really big roach in here, so it's going to be hard to locate them, but if I could locate them, it'd be nice to catch one or two of them because I think they're all over two pounds. Um, I've been for a stalk up on the other pond um, this afternoon. Had a good walk around, saw one or two fish, but nothing really to go at until I got to a bay right down the bottom of the lake um, and there was definitely a number of fish in there. Um, so what I did, I, the only way I could get to them, because it was around the corner and it was really overgrown, there was like a, a muddy beach area going around the corner, so um, I rolled up my trouser legs, I rolled up my trouser legs um, and I waded out along the, uh, the edge of the mud. And I got quite close to them and I could see that they were grass carp. There was about 15 or so of them in there. They didn't look particularly big ones, but um, decent, you know, 15, 20 pounds. Um, so I started flicking out just free line bits of sweet corn and lunch meat just in their path just to see if they would take it, but they didn't. Um, they wouldn't take anything at all. So uh, I left them to it and I've come back. I've got half a bucket of dog, dog biscuits that I, that, I, um, that I brought and I've just thrown a load of uh, tutti fruity juice all over them because they do like sweet stuff, apparently the grass carp. Um, so tomorrow I should introduce a few of those and see how they respond to them. Um, I should probably give these rods until about 10 o'clock in the morning, um, have a bit of breakfast and then wind them in, bake the spots up and then leave them all day again. Um, and then go for another stalk and see if I can catch something up on the other pond. So that's the plan. I'm loving it at the moment. It's really quite warm. It's a really mild evening. Um, just had a bit of tea. I've just drinking a cup of tea and having a couple of biscuits at the moment. So um, yeah, having a fantastic time and it's still only the first day. So um, I'll keep you posted if anything happens. Good morning, it's uh, Sunday morning now, um, I had one run uh, this morning, it was about quarter to five, I come flying out, cut my foot on my stove, um, had a bit of a nightmare actually because I hooked into the fish, um, it weeded me up a bit, I got the fish out of the weed, um, it was really really pulling ponderously, if I haven't caught any really big carp but if, 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 if I've ever hooked one I think that was it, you know, it felt, felt really good. Um, and it's a couple of minutes into the battle, it just came free. Um, so, a bit wounded by that this morning, but optimistic. They're in the, in the area. Um, obviously, feeding on the bait that I put out, 
um, and it was only the first night, so it bodes well. I am optimistic of another chance, definitely another chance before um, before it's home time. I just want to catch one good fish, you know, that's all I want to do, I'm not greedy. Um, during the days I'm going to be stalking on the other on the other lake, um, trying to catch, there's, there's grass carp down there, I found some yesterday, I'm going to have a play with them today, uh, and there's some other carp swimming around by a, a point that I found. Um, like a spit that goes out into the into the lake and there's some carp swimming around there. They didn't look massive, I mean they're probably sort of like mid doubles to, to 20 pounders but if I can have some fun with them during the day um, and uh, and leave these spots alone all day, let the fish get confident all day and just put the rigs out at night, I think there's a good chance that I, that I could get something. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. So um, I'll keep you posted and um, yeah, see ya. Well, good afternoon. Um, I'm down on the 15 acre lake now. I got down here quite a bit earlier actually, but I've had a little bit of a, a problem with the memory card, so I had a memory card full up. Um, and if you can imagine, I'm fishing peg one on the seven acre lake um, and uh, overnight, and I'm stalking the very last peg of the 15 acre lake, so I'm opposite end, end of the fishery. Um, add to that, I stepped on my stove when I come out to grab a run last night and, and uh, punctured my foot. I'm hopping a little bit as it is, so it's taken a bit of time for me to get backwards and forwards. But I've got, I've got new memory cards now, so um, I just wanted to let you know what's happening. Um, I've baited up the spots now uh, in my nighttime swim. I've walked my lines up the bank as well um, and put some tent pegs in to mark them out and when I get to the spot I'm putting some elastic bands around the spool but around the actual line itself a couple of elastic bands really tight so that it's acting as a line clip obviously the old reels that I'm using don't have line clips so I'm, I'm, ha I'm hitting the elastic band just dropping right on the spot feather it down and I can take the elastic bands off um, and now if I get a run in the night I can walk the lines back out to the tent pegs and re-elasticate them up so I'm fishing fairly effectively now um, so um, fingers crossed we shouldn't have any problems um, but as I say I wound in at about half nine this morning after breakfast as soon as I finished that it was about ten o'clock I went round and baited up fairly heavily I suppose I put about probably about a kilo on each on each spot you know I'm, 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 I'm a little bit of a loner down there in peg one all the fish most of the fish seem to be crashing around sort of peg three peg four area um, and if, if, I, if the fish are going to travel along that far bank I want to be able to stop them and not just give them a mouthful I want them to come back and keep feeding and bring their mates as well so um, I've, I've baited fairly heavily with, with all sorts I've got some of my sausage oil boilies I've put some I've put a kilo of hybrid in with it as well some little 10 millers some 15 millers some 18 millers I've mixed it all up so just to keep them guessing um, and on, on the hairs I'm actually fishing with uh, double double 18 mil bottom baits I'm not fishing pop-ups at the moment um, yeah so um, with that rested, I've come down to uh, the bay that I've, I've, I was at yesterday. I found some grass carp um, in the bay. They're still there in the bay, but they don't seem to be there in numbers. But out in the lake behind me, um, there's plenty of carp cruising about. It's a really hot day, and they've got their backs out of the water. Um, and there's a corner just in front of me, um, like a spit that comes out into the lake, and they're, they're swimming around there quite regularly. Um, so I suppose about an hour ago, I sort of catapulted a load of sweet corn out there. Um, I had to go back and get a memory card while I was there I sorted the rods and the lines out and stuff when I come back there's fish feeding on sweet corn so I've put a little bit more out there just to semi spook them off so I can get a couple of rigs in place I've just put a couple of little pop ups on the spot uh, and see if we can get nick a fish um, I've also got a bucket of dog biscuits earlier I saw a carp cruise through um, I threw a couple of dog biscuits in his path and he actually took one of them off the top and then carried on going um, maybe out of curiosity more than anything else but it was a good sign so I'm going to persevere with that and see if I can get one off the top as well so uh, yeah, we'll let you know if anything happens.
There we go. Managed to open my account. Just flicked to pop up out onto some shallow water where I saw some carp charging up and down. Um, they're obviously enjoying themselves out there. I thought if I put a couple of blatant pop-ups out there, um, one of them might pick up on the way through. I've seen some fairly decent sized fish out there actually. And this little scamp's uh, picked it up, but um, well pleased, well pleased. There's a fish on the bank, first one, and uh, and what a little stunner too. Gonna slip him back and get the rods back out. That's a brilliant start. There we go, it's uh, it's there she is, my first one. Second night in, 35 and a half pounds. Gorgeous scaly fish. Oh, couldn't have dreamed for a better fish to, start to open my account with. I was so chuffed with that. Proper battle underneath the rod tip too, epic battle. Oh, what a fish that is. Spin her around. There she is. Look at that. Absolute stunner. Absolute chunk. Absolutely made up. What a fish. Let's pop her back. Fantastic. Good morning, it's Monday morning now, um, so we're a couple of nights in. Um, as you've seen from the footage previously, um, I have my first decent carp um, from the Seven Acre Lake this morning, early hours. Uh, absolutely made up of that beautiful fish, 35 and a half pound. Um, a scaly one as well. Um, I don't think the footage was that great because obviously it's um, it's in the dark. I don't have any floodlights or anything as such. I was, I was fortunate that I was able to get the car uh, roll the car down fairly close so I could put the headlights on so you could see what you saw um, but it was a fabulous fish and I was just so pleased to get off the mark with such a lovely one um, so confidence is sky high now especially after losing one on the first night um, peace has been restored I'm um, going to have a wonder it's about 11 o'clock now um, I've won the rods in um, I've baited up the spots ready for tonight I'm, I'm leaving it as late as possible to put the, to put the rods out because um, going by the last few weeks it's been an early morning bite um, and that's happened on the last two nights as well uh, one of the other fellas, there's three of us on the lake at the moment one of the other fellas had a fish at four o'clock this morning and another one about half six, quarter to seven so it's definitely morning bite time um, so that's I'm going to put all my eggs in that basket I think and um, leave the swim alone and let them just get on the bait with no pressure during the day um, should they feel the need uh, yesterday I did a lot of running around and stalking on the on the 15 acre lake um, there's a lot more fish in that one and uh, generally it's an easier water uh, but it hasn't proved so I did I did manage to hook um, a grass carp last night about 25 20 25 pound um, from the causeway uh, in a little spot um, but it took me for a snag tree and the line was grating and grating against the tree and I ended up losing it but but it's one of those things, it's part and parcel of stalking and, and trying to catch them up close and personal especially if they're set around sort of snags and stuff and it's really hot it, it's hot again today, it's going to be another warm day um, so I don't know how successful stalking is going to be today but it's going to be lovely wandering around with a rod in my hand um, hopefully get some nice footage as well um, as I'm going um, and we'll see where it goes um, I'm going to take a, a trip up to the supermarket today as well I didn't bring much in the way of provisions because there's a supermarket just down the road so I thought I'd do that. I left it till yesterday afternoon and it was closed so um, I struggled a little bit last night um, food wise but 
Um, so yeah, I'm going to pop down the supermarket, grab a few bits and pieces, some cold drinks to put in the fridge, um, and then probably go and have a little look at the other lake, leave this one alone, and we'll see where we go from there. So I'll catch up with you a little bit later. Well, I've just had tea, um, had a pizza, went back to the swim to put the rods out for the night um, and as it was still a little bit early, it was about half six I think, um, I thought it was worth going for a, a wander up onto the other pond to the spot where I lost the grass cut up yesterday just to see if there was anything else milling around there. Um, so there wasn't, I put a couple of handfuls of bait on the spot and then moved on to the platform. Um, again the platform was quiet so in about 15 minutes I went back to check the bait that I'd just put down um, and there were a couple of swirls there so I set up a little float a little size 10 hook and a single size 10 um, cell boilie side hooked. Dropped it down on the spot and it went away pretty much straight away. And uh, I'm just going to hold this fish up and show you. Oh, it's a lovely fish, it's weighed 28 and a half pound with the, with the sling. And I believe the slings are about five pounds when they're wet. So probably about 23 and a half, 24 pounds. But on a really light rod and float tackle, that was great fun. Full of beans. There it is. What a cracking fish that is. <laughs> I'll give him back shortly. I just wanted to show you. It's a lovely fish. There you go. That's beautiful. Gotta be happy with that. I'm gonna slip him back now and get back to the swim and put the rods out for the night. Great stuff. Morning. It's Tuesday morning now, um, so three nights in, four to go, so still not even halfway through the trip yet. Um, quite night in as much as they turned up about two o'clock as they usually do down my end of the lake. Um, started getting a few liners. Um, I had a run at 4.30, uh, which dropped before I got to the rod. Um, when I wound in, the hook point had gone, must maybe blunted on a bit of gravel or something, so just bad luck I think. Um, and then after that it went deadly quiet. I've, just, I've looked out this morning. And there's a few more bubbles coming up on the spots so um, I'm gonna leave them out for another half an hour I'm just finishing off my breakfast and uh, just brewing a cup of tea right now and then I shall get some more bait out of the freezer top the spots up and probably head down to the the bigger lake again and see if I can stalk something out the edge on the float again like I did yesterday that was really cool so I will catch up with you next time I do one of these excellent So it's Tuesday lunchtime now. Um, I'm being a bit quiet because I've come for a walk down to the bay on the big lake that I was at the other day. Um, and just behind me, really close to the margins, there are some big grass carp cruising up and down. Um, so I'm going to just scatter some hemp and crushed up boilies. Um, just literally a couple of rod lengths out from the platform here. And I'm going to float fish with a centre pin over the top um, with just a side hooked half a boilie. Um, and see if I can catch one of these things. These things are electric and they are quite big. They look like they're about 20, 25 pounds. Um, so I've got, it's, it's a carp rod, but it's a fiberglass carp rod. Anyone that knows fiberglass carp rods will know that they bend. So um, I'm expecting some fireworks, but that's what it's all about. It's all about excitement today. Um, didn't get anything last night. It's Tuesday lunchtime now. Um, last night I had one run, one pickup. Um, 
it dropped it before I got to the rod and when I when I felt the hook point it had gone maybe dinked on a bit of gravel or something but it just didn't didn't penetrate so um, I didn't convert the chance into a, into a fish on the bank but um, looking forward to tonight I'm going to hone things a little bit tonight um, been getting lots and lots of liners so I don't like using them but I think tonight I'm going to just drop some back leads on just to see if I can pin everything out of the way when I'm spooking fish I think it's just it's it's not doing me any favours at all so if I can pin it down I think tonight could be a bit more productive but we'll have to see um, but in the meantime I'm going to have a go at these grass carp behind me because they look like they're up for it Well, I don't know how much of that you actually captured. Um, I got round to a swim seven and I saw some fish just beyond the spit that's in front of swim seven. You can't really get round, but I decided to wade around the bank um, and see if I could get myself round here where there seemed to be quite a few fish. They seem to be all grass carp. So I thought if I can get a grass carp, um, I've got a centre pin um, and a float and I just side hooked half a boilie, you know, I just wanted to flick it out into into the areas where the fish were and see if one of them would pick it up. Well, I managed to get a fish to pick it up, but it wasn't a grass carp. Um, it was a mirror. And a bloody good one too. Look at that. Look at that for a mirror. On the floating centre bit. Unbelievable scrap. The water's so shallow out here in front of me. So, uh, it's just charged up and down, left and right, absolutely mental. Gotta be happy with that. That's an upper 20, that is. Look how wide that is. What a beautiful fish. What a beautiful carp that is. God, 
Didn't have scrap. Didn't have scrap. Hey, Grandma, babes. Look at that. That's a lovely picture. There you go. Isn't that gorgeous? Mwah. Big French carp on the pin. Love it. Let's let her go. Bonjour, my darling. Bonjour. Does it get any better than that? It's, um, got my first fish of the night from my uh, from the night spots. Um, middle rod went off. I've got a small common. It's 19 and a half pounds. Um, it's not one of the monsters, but it's a beautiful fish. Just gonna see if I can hold her up to show you. She's gorgeous. There she is. There she is. 19 and a half pound. Gorgeous carp. Gorgeous carp she is. Just turn it around. Turn it around and have a look at the other side. Yeah, she's a pretty fish. She's a pretty fish. There she is. There she is. There she is. Can I surf down? There's a good girl. Good morning. I'm just going to do a quick vlog piece now because uh, I want to get down the other end of this lake. You can see behind me um, and see if I can find some grass carp or, or whatever. Um, it's Wednesday morning. It's about 11 o'clock. Uh, the swim I'm fishing was really quiet last night. It started off pretty well. I had a 19 and a half pound common about midnight. Um, put the rod back out. Sort of sat on the rods expecting it to happen, but very, very quiet. I fell, fell asleep, woke up at half six, and the rods were still. Um, so, I've had some breakfast this morning, topped up the spots, um, and I'm back on my travels again. So, um, right over in the far corner over there behind me, you can see that's where I'm heading to. Um, already behind me, I can see some fizzing and some, some carp bow waving around. Perfect day, it's overcast. Um, there's a light breeze, but very, very gentle. Um, so should be able to have some fun over there. Got various bits and pieces to try. Uh, so see if we can get a few fish, fish for the film. Excellent. I don't know if you can hear me, but I need to whisper. But just behind me over here, there's two separate patches of bubbles coming up, really, really fizzing. Um, obviously a couple of fish feeding down there. And they're about a rod length from the bank. So I've got, I've got my float rod set up. Float set about two foot deep. I'm going to find an old uh, half a washed out boilie and just side hook it. See if I can. There's definitely fish moving. I can see the ripples now. I'm going to uh, side hook a boilie, chuck it past the bubbles, and see if I can tease it back. See if we can get a bite. Fingers crossed.
Good afternoon, it's Thursday afternoon now, a couple of nights left to go. Um, last night over in Peg One, it was really, really quiet again. Um, nothing, hardly any liners at all, just don't think the fish have been visiting it. Um, <clears throat> we've looked at the water colour as well, it's really clear down that end, um, out in the middle of the lake in front of Pegs Two and Three, where the main bulk of the weed is. You can see the water colour is just different, yeah. it's clouded up. Um, stand in the swim long enough you see fish roll, jump, um, it's obvious where they are. So um, I've made a move, I've moved into peg two for the last couple of nights. Um, it's a bit of a different um, different ball game to be honest with you. They're right in the weed, there's small holes in the weed, it's going to be tricky. And what I don't want to do is start casting on top of them and um, throwing catapult and bullies all over them. <coughs> so I'm going to be a little bit stealthy in what I'm doing. Um, if I'm going to nick one of these fish, and some of them that are rolling, they do look really good fish, and some really big grass carp in amongst them as well. I'm 40 pounders, you know, these are serious fish. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to wade out. It's not, the spots aren't that far out, they're probably about 20, 25 yards out. So, I'm going to wade out with some chest waders on, um, and I'm going to take a rod with me and some bait in a bucket, um, and I'm going to feel about in the in the holes in the weed, find a spot to drop some. Some, a rig and some bait and I'm going to walk back again minimal disturbance do it all nice and smooth and quiet no plopping about or casting leads um, and then I'm going to come back to the bank and I'm going to set it up so just one rod um, and see how that goes one rod in the right spot um, rather than just putting another couple out for the sake of it and then making a load of disturbance and then spooking the fish further onto another swim um, so I'm going to give that a go tonight and, uh, and see how it goes so um, I'm just going to get a little bit of footage of me lowering the rigs out but I just want to wait until the rain stops. At the moment it's raining. It's been raining for about half an hour now. I'm hoping it's going to stop soon because when the rain hits the surface of the water it means the, the visibility is really poor. I can't actually see the holes in the weed. So if the rain can stop I can get out there and get what do, do what I've got to do. So um, yeah, I'll catch up with you in a bit.
completely. So tight. Jeez. So tight. So tight. Um, Viva la France. Viva la France. <laughs> Viva la Sacré. Sweet beer, I thought it was nice. Like, it? It's yeah. strong. Is it? Oh, yeah, you'll enjoy that. I'm going to be singing. That. Get my cello out. <laughs> Penultimate light. It's um, Big Fish Thursday. I think you're on them. Yeah. I think they're there. I think with you were. Uh, Should get a chance tonight. I think we're allowing the rods in as well. No strategic yeah. placing them like that in the weed. Yeah. Yeah, I think you've got every chance of a fish tonight. Yeah. Fingers crossed, mate. Well, let's what be honest. To them? Chance of a big fish too. Yeah. We'll go and buy the ones that have stuck their heads out today. Yeah, absolutely. There's a fish there. There's one. Yeah. Right on cue. Exactly what you're saying though, they're not coming out to the wrist of the tail, they're just literally just porpoising, poking Half the noses out, out yeah. and if back you, down. If you weren't looking, you wouldn't no, know. No, 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 no. It's almost sort of in stealth mode, you know? Yeah. It's just thrown up a big patch of bubbles there where he's popped his head out. Yeah. Beautiful I'm glad evening. I put that this side. Huh? I'm glad I put that this side. Because I can see better. Yeah, yeah. Perfect evening, eh? Gorgeous. Yeah. The owls will start in a minute, the bats will be out. Yeah, yeah absolutely. On a great trip, I wouldn't change a thing. No, you've got to take every day as it comes. Yeah. Every day is a mini session, and that's what you had planned anyway, yeah. right from the start. Yeah. Two sessions every day. Absolutely. Daytime session and yeah. a night session. Yeah. You know, you think of the variety that you've had over the course of the last four yeah. days. Caught tension on the float. Yeah. Caught carp on the centre pin, yeah. carp on the float. Yeah. Thirty-five and a half pound off off the yeah. night time spot. Yeah. Yeah. You've had yeah. a mixed bag, haven't you? I've crammed a lot in. Yeah. Well, you have. You've done some miles as well because you've put the effort in. Yeah. But effort equals reward. Been in the water a few times. <laughs> That's for your choice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm told from, you, from, um, from carbon to rubber. Yeah. For volume. <laughs> so good evening, it's, um, it's ten past eleven now, quarter past eleven-ish. Um, last time I spoke to you, I was going to put some rods out in the weed in peg two. I'd moved into peg two from peg one, because I saw plenty of fish out there in the weed. And, um, so basically I, I waded out and I dropped the rigs into the holes in the weed, make sure that it felt good down there, nice and clear, and then dropped some bait on the spots. Um, then walked the rod back to the bank. I did that twice in two separate areas and then I put a third rod over the far side of the of the lake and catapults and bullies around it. Um, since then Adam's come down, he's brought his stove down, he's got a wood burning stove, it's fantastic, it's really warm. We've been cooking some toast on it and we've had a beer and we've had a bit of a laugh and stuff because it's it's a mid penultimate night basically. I'm going home on Saturday and it's Thursday today. So um, anyway, we're just sitting here having a bit of a chinwag, just uh, just sort of contemplating how good it would be if we actually got a run and got a fish on the bank, and then the right hand rod screamed off. So bent into it, it, it shook its head a lot. It felt like a smallish fish because it was doing lots of head shaking, um, as the small ones do. And then, but it stayed on the surface um, throughout the whole thing. And then, as it got, I suppose about 15 yards out started to grate a little bit, started to get a bit solid in the weed. Um, so Adam donned the, the waders, jumped in the water, got out there, pe peeled some of the weed out the way, um, got the fish moving again, and then I just steady pumped her back to shore. Um, and then passed Adam the net, and then he got her in the net, and, and job done. And we've caught a fantastic mirror. Um, I'll put the pictures up on the screen in a second. Um, beautiful mirror, 23 and a half pound, um, really scaly one. Um, Adam told me about the parents actually, a bit, little story about uh, a black and white fish which was uh, some famous best fish in the country in, in the angler's mouth some years ago and it was actually a fish bred from that fish so a um, bit, bit of a history to it as well, a bit of a story behind it so yeah chuffed to bits, chuffed to bits to get another fish um, especially after the effort I made to get the rod out on the spot 
Um, I've still got another rod, another two rods fishing, one, one in the weed, uh, one over the far bank, and the one that I just caught the fish on, I put a pop-up on it, just a single, and put it out um, over the back into a bit of a channel, just the other side of the weed where the fish have been patrolling and jumping all evening. So hopefully that, that one, of the, one of the other rods will go and we'll have another fish through the night. If not, we've still got all day tomorrow and another night to go. So, uh, so we'll see how that goes. So I'll see you when I get another fish or at breakfast time. Cheers. Well, as you can see, it's an absolutely beautiful afternoon. It's so warm. Um, I think it's about four o'clock now, maybe quarter past four. Um, it's the last night tonight. Uh, three rods are out now. I've got two two back on the spot, and I've got one over on the far bank. Um, just kicking back now and reflecting on the week. To be honest with you, it's um, it's been an amazing week. It's an amazing fishery. It's been lovely to take some time off work because I have been busy just recently so it was nice just to kick back and chill out. I've been busy fishing for the first few days I'll be honest with you. Um, fishing busy at night time and uh, stalking during the day up on the other lake just chasing around um, trying to capitalise. I've had five fish, um, best going 35 pound 8 ounces which is my second biggest ever carp so it's not to be sniffed at you know. If I don't catch any more now it's been a fantastic week. Um, it would have been nice to have caught a 40 pound. I think that was the target I set myself when I came out. It wasn't a, if I don't catch one, I'm going to fail target. You know, it was just a, just something to strive towards. Um, and who knows, it might still happen on the last night. But um, it really doesn't matter. I've had a fantastic time. Um, the two other lads have been brilliant. Um, to be honest with you, I haven't seen them much. They've been, they've been fishing their swims. I've been fishing mine. We usually bump into each other at tea time up at the hut there and exchange pleasantries and and uh, recap on how our days have been and how the nights were. And they both caught 40 pounders, so fair play to them. Doff my cap to, to the pair of them. Uh, Mark was struggling, and, uh, and he's had two in the last sort of 12 hours, two 40 pounders, so, you know, just shows you it can happen, just like that. Um, but they've been up on the other pond today, and Mark's had a couple of fish, I think uh, an upper 20 and a mid double. It's an amazing pond, the other one. But to be honest, they're both amazing ponds. Adam has put so much work into this place. Um, during the during the, the season, he's working tirelessly, looking after the, the customers. You know, just generally, you know, just just being on hand in case you, if you need anything. Um, and then throughout the close season, when the anglers are gone, you know, he's draining the ponds down, he's sorting the stock out, he's bringing on the new stock, um, sifting through, building new new huts. Um, just maintain it. It's, you know, it's just it's just a, a round the year, a round the year thing. It is tough work, but um, I mean, he's got such a lovely place here. He should be proud. He should be really proud. Um, and it's been lovely to meet his family as well. He's got an amazing family. Oh, there we go. I don't know what they are. They look like more ends, but they're not more ends. But um, there you go. Every so often they'll fly into my line, and uh, all that pain's taken wading out and dropping the rig on the spot it's kind of ruined because you've probably moved the lead and and uh i've got to start all over again but that's what i should probably do in a minute put the waders back on and just um, pop out and 
reposition that, that rig just to make sure it's fishing effectively in the right spot. Yeah, I hope, I hope this video has, um, has shown what a lovely place it is. You know, I've been trying to capture bits and pieces on film. Uh, when I get home, I'll edit it all together and you'll see some of the wildlife, the lake itself, um, some funny moments, a few fish that I've caught. Um, and hopefully it, it you know it, it will show what a beautiful place this really is the weather's been up and down it's been if it's like, like now it's been some really really there's been some really sunny afternoons and there's been some, some thundery showers you know um, where I've been hiding under a tree but um, it's all part and parcel of the adventure for me so tomorrow I've got to be off by 10 o'clock in the morning so I should start start having a little pack down tonight I actually start putting away some of the stuff that I don't need anymore and then tomorrow probably start putting like the bivvy away the bed chair just get it all packed up ready so that I can back the car along the path load it up when it's time to go but the rods will stay out to the, to the death you know because you never know anything could happen in fishing so yeah I'm just going to uh, going to wade out now reposition this rod and hopefully I won't get any anything else fly into the line There's the albino koi poo having his morning swim. Final morning now, it's about quarter past eight. I've got to be off by 10, so the rods are out for the last hour and a bit. And then that's it, time to head home. Quiet night last night, no fish, no bleeps. But a good night's sleep. Feel really refreshed this morning for the journey home. I've probably got about seven hours driving this side. Um, the train and then another couple of hours until I get home so um, be nice not to be shattered so that's it it's all over um, I'm just about five minutes away from the fishery now just stopped at the supermarket to get a couple of bottles of cheap wine um, and I've got about six hours drive now to Calais um, and then a couple of hours from Folkestone back home to Portsmouth so I've got a bit of a journey ahead of me now a uh, decent night's sleep uh, and then back in the swing of it tomorrow so um, as soon as I can I shall start reliving this through the through the footage that I've got on the camera um, and I'll put a video together obviously the video that you would have just watched because this bit will be right at the end um, so yeah so thanks for watching uh, thanks for watching thanks for sharing the journey with me um, and until next time take care